Hey everybody, it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play Horse With No Name by America, which is one of the easiest songs you could play on guitar. You know, as far as the chords are concerned, it's just a two chord song and we just go back and forth between them the entire time. The strumming has a little bit of, you know, offbeat stuff in it, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with this lesson. We're going to go through this in six steps, building up. You know, starting with the simplest thing and then just adding one thing until we're playing through the entire song. So, you know, this is one of the most beginner friendly lessons ever. But if you are a little past being a beginner, we still have some extra stuff for you, like that strumming pattern with some syncopation in it. Anyways, if along the way you find that you need any extra help, I have an, a free ebook. It's completely free to all my subscribers that goes over all the basics of acoustic rhythm guitar. You know, chords, strumming, developing your rhythm, putting it all together. So please check that out. If you haven't gotten your copy yet, I'll put a link in the corner and I'll put a link down below as well. Otherwise, we're just gonna jump right in. The first chord shape is E minor. And E minor uses just two fingers. We have our first finger on the second fret of the A string and our middle finger just underneath it. The real trick here is to curl your fingers. You know, if, if they're flat, strings won't work. You want to curl them nicely. And that requires getting your elbow in a good spot, you know, getting your thumb. You know, if your thumb's too high and if it's too low, it really messes up your wrist. So you want to have it somewhere in the middle, you know, where it's nice and comfortable, pointing upwards. And then you can just test each string See if you have them all ringing. If something's missing, it's not the biggest deal, you know? The one thing with a two chord song is that you're gonna be pressing the same strings in the same spot the entire time. And it actually really wears down on those two spots on your fingers. You know, when I was recording the full play along for this, where I played through the entire song, you're just pressing the same spots the whole time. And it, it actually started to hurt my fingers a little bit compared to like, the usual tunes where you're moving your fingers around and you're pressing with different spots here and there. This one, you're just doing the same motions over and over again. So please take your time with this. If you start feeling any pain or any discomfort, you know, take a break from it. Go do something else. Work on some strumming or, or you know, something other than just destroying your fingers. Anyways, we have that E minor shape. And then we're going to go to, you would call this D six slash nine and that sounds crazy but it's just one finger so i have my first finger on the second fret of the g string you can put your middle finger there as well whichever is easier for you and i want you to try going back and forth between those shapes e minor going to that d6 slash nine and at this point don't worry about what strings to hit let's just focus on the chord shapes themselves So that's step one, getting used to the motions between E minor and that D chord. Now the next thing we want to do is mute the thickest string on that D chord. And I have my thumb lightly over the top muting that string. You could also mute it by lightly touching it with your first finger. And if muting is a bit tough for you, you could always just avoid strumming that string. But that creates another problem, you know, if for your E minor chord, you can hit all the strings, you know, get nice and loose. And then for this D chord, you have to aim. It kind of makes you tighten up a little and it doesn't let you, let you uh, be loose with the rhythm. That's the beauty of muting the excess strings is it lets you strum the exact same way and keep a consistency there that gives your playing a, a flow to it. So I do encourage you to work on that mute as if it's part of the chord shape, you know, just going between E minor and then the D with that mute, whichever way you're doing it. So step one, we work on the shapes by themselves. Step two, we add that mute, which is optional, but recommended. Now step three, we're going to learn a simple version of the strumming pattern. And this is actually the first half of the real pattern. So it is part of the pattern, but we only need to use the first half if we want to keep it really simple. It goes like this. 
And that is the most common strumming pattern ever. I've gone over this in three separate tutorials in my my ebook, my beginner's course, a lot of places because it's so useful. I'll put a link to a tutorial in the corner there. But let's just take a moment and work on it nice and slow. We can break down our pattern into two halves. First, we have down, down, up. And I want to go down, down, up, three, four. Down, down, up, three, four. Counting out that three, four. That's really important because it gives us a four beat thing to work on, you know, a four beat thing, just like our strumming pattern is going to be. So we play down on beat one, down up on beat two, and then we count three, four out loud, slow and steady. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, three, four. And I find vocalizing it, saying down, down, up really helps. So please try it just like I'm doing it. Then the second half of the pattern, it goes miss, up, down, up. So we miss the strings on beat three, and then we play up, down, up. And I want you to say one, two, miss, up, down, up. One, two, miss, up, down, up. And notice when I'm counting one, two, I'm still moving my arm. One, two, miss, up, down, up. Because I'm training this arm to just constantly be moving with the beat. Down, up, down, up. One, and two, and three, and four, and. You know, that's a valid exercise in and of itself, just counting out loud and doing that. You know, it helps teach our bodies that the downstrokes happen on the numbers and the upstrokes happen on the ands. Anyways, we work on the pattern in halves like that, and then we put it together going one, two, three, four. Down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. We could even practice saying the pattern first to like develop our internal sense of rhythm, you know, going down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down down, up, miss, up, down, up. If you clap while you do that, you know, or snap, down, up, down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. You know, you're, you're getting that rhythm inside. And then it's just telling your hand to do that. Down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down. And you just tell it to do that over and over again. You know, there's a bunch of ways to go about this because rhythm is such a mysterious thing. You know, it's so abstract. You can see chord shapes. You can see where to put your fingers. But rhythm, there's nothing really to see. It's more about feeling it and hearing it. So um, if you need extra help with that, my free ebook goes over all of that. I also have my complete beginner's course, which is designed to build up all your musical skills from the ground up. If you have no previous experience, it's perfect for you because it's going to help you develop your internal rhythm, you know, and then put that into motion with the strumming. So please check that out if you'd like extra help. Otherwise, that's our strumming pattern. And once you're pretty comfortable with it on each of the chord shapes, we can put it together with our chord progression, which is really simple. We play it one time on E minor and then one time on D back and forth. And that's pretty much the entire song. Let's just try it. I want to use my metronome just so we can keep a steady beat. I'm going to set it to 74 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. And you could take that and play through the entire song, just going back and forth between E minor and D. But I do recommend taking a look at how the whole song is constructed. I'll put a timestamp in the corner so you can skip ahead to that part of the song if you're not interested in learning the more advanced strumming pattern. But if you do want to learn the upgraded strumming pattern, we're going to basically play the same thing on E minor. But then for the D chord, we have this really syncopated strumming pattern that goes like this. 
you know, it's just a ton of upstrokes that creates this really offbeat feeling. And I think the best way to get it is to start out by muting the strings. And I'm just going to do this kind of like a metronome, you know, just going down, up, down, up, over and over again. Then we're going to say our pattern. Down, up, 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 down, up, down, up. You know, just saying the second half of that pattern over and over again. If that's too much for you, you could always just clap your hands. Down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, 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 down, up. And you're saying up when you separate your hands. Down, up, 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 down, up. So that's how we would get it. You know, just taking our time, counting it, getting it out getting it internal, you know, and then we can get it out on guitar going down, up, 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 down, up. One, two, three, four, down, up, 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 down, up. One, two, three, four. And once you can feel that, all you have to do is add our common progression during the one, two, three, four you know, during that gap. And we go three, four, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up. Common pattern. And then down, up, 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 down, up. So I want you to just take a look at that whole thing and work through it at your own pace. First, getting the motions down in the correct order, learning to say it, and then, you know, eventually adding some rhythm to it as you say it. You know, this is a big undertaking. The strumming pattern is not easy by any means, but it is something that we can work our way up to if we go through it in those small steps. Now, when it comes to adding this strumming pattern to our chord progression, we have to switch chords halfway through. So we basically do the common progression, you know, the first half on our E minor chord. And then for the D chord, we're gonna go down, up, up up down up. so you know the part that we did before happens on e minor and then we're changing what we do on d that's the simplest way to put it so i want you to try that let's just try it together nice and slow with our metronome a uh, one two three four So at this point, all that's left to do is learn to play through the entire song. And I know I mentioned earlier that you just go through that chord progression over and over again, and that's the entire song. And that is true. But I think it's important to know about the different sections. You know, when's the chorus coming? When's that la, 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 la? When's that part coming? You know, and using those as little guideposts. And when I typed in horse with no name chords and lyrics on Google, the first one that pops up is missing some stuff. You know, that's the thing with a lot of the chords and lyrics sheets online. Like they'll exclude little bits and have like their own acoustic strumming version of it. But when it comes to playing through the entire song, I gave it a good listen and I have the exact order of each little section. So the intro is just our chord progression two times. Then the first verse, we play our progression. When I say progression, I just mean E minor and then D. We do it eight times. Then the chorus is four times. And then the la 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 part, that's what I'm gonna call it, is our chord progression four times. Then the second verse, we do our chord progression six times. Then we have another chorus. And then on this second la 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 part, we play our chord progression three times. And then we do our strumming pattern normally on E minor. And we do a downstroke on D, and that's it. So we, we just let it ring out, and then we continue with the rest of the song. So let's just take a look at that. We go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
and then we go back into our progression. Then there's a guitar solo and our progression happens four times, another verse eight times, chorus, and then it fades out doing the la 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 part at least 12 times, but you don't have to do it that long. You can just do it a couple times, whatever, you know, by that point your fingers might be dying from pressing that the same spots over and over again. Anyways, I want you to write out that chord order and listen to the original recording. That'll help you develop your sense of form, you know, where you are within the song. And with all that in mind, once you've listened to the song and you know what to expect, you can try to play along with the original recording. And you can just look it up on YouTube and in the corner there, you can slow down the video. If you're on mobile, there's another way to do it. You can just look it up online. But basically you can slow it down and practice along with the entire recording that way. I also have a full playthrough on my Patreon page where I play through the song just like we've learned it. And that's available to members of my Patreon page. I'll put a link to that down below. Don't forget to check out my free ebook if you need any extra help. There's also my complete beginners course, which is like a guided tour through all the fundamentals, all the way from absolute beginner to confident strummer. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.